Hello, I'm Jay Miller. Let's spend a few minutes with Vault Explorer. Today we're going to examine one of Vault Explorer's most interesting but least well-known features, the secure area. Before we get into how the secure area works, I first want to discuss why it might be necessary at all. Consider the typical cloud storage use case. You create a document on your PC and upload that document to the cloud for safekeeping. But how safe is that document? Let's suppose Mallory here has a nefarious interest in your document. There are three basic categories or vectors of attack for Mallory. First, he can catch the document as it's transferred to the cloud. Let's call this an interception attack. This sort of attack is very common in shared wireless environments like coffee shops. He could hack through the cloud storage services defenses. Let's call this a frontal attack. These attacks are generally very difficult, but they are often mounted by more experienced or even professional hackers. Finally, he could know of a secret way into the service that bypasses its defenses. We'll call this a backdoor attack. In this case, Mallory might be a disgruntled employee, a contractor involved with the service, or the victim of a social engineering attack. These attacks are rare, but they are very difficult to prevent. Interception attacks are the easiest sort of attack to mount, but basic internet technology called SSL renders the transfer nearly impervious to attack. SSL creates a sort of tunnel between the client and the service such that when a document is inside the tunnel, Mallory is unable to eavesdrop on the transmission. The document emerges from the tunnel at its destination, and now Mallory has to try another attack vector. Unlike interception attacks, there is no general defense against the other attack vectors. Tools such as firewalls, intrusion detection systems, and encrypted file systems make these attacks more difficult, but there is no way to prevent them entirely. And if an attack does succeed, Mallory may gain access to documents stored on the system. The secure area addresses all three of these attack vectors, though because SSL is so effective, I'm just going to ignore interception attacks. It works by creating an encryption key that is controlled by you, the user. This key may be stored on the local computer or on removable media, such as a USB flash drive. Before sending the document to the secure area, Vault Explorer uses your key to enclose the document in what is called a secure envelope that can only be unlocked with your key. It then sends the envelope off to the cloud. Now let's bring Mallory back into the picture. The secure area does not attempt to prevent Mallory's attacks. Instead, it protects your data in the event of a successful attack. To wit, if Mallory gains access through either the front or back door, he may steal a copy of the secure envelope, which, as we discussed, can only be opened with the key controlled by the user. Now that you have some theory, let's see it in action. The secure area is available off the root of the Vault Explorer namespace. Note the secure looking key icon. The first time we try to use the secure area, a wizard will appear that guides us through the creation and storage of the key. The first step is to choose a passphrase that will be used to derive a binary encryption key. This passphrase only has to be entered once to create the key, so it's a good idea to use a strong passphrase. It is critical that we remember it, however, because if we lose the key that's about to be created, this passphrase will be required to recreate it. Next, we must choose where the key should be stored. The first option stores the key in the user profile on the local PC, while the second option allows us to choose any arbitrary location, including on a USB stick or other removable media. Note that we must click the additional checkbox before the wizard will proceed. It is vital that we understand that if we don't have the key, we have no more ability to recover our data than does Mallory. It is a feature of this system that we cannot, for example, call Digidata and ask them to recover our lost key. After this step, the secure area is ready to use. At this point, there is very little to show on the client because from the user's point of view, the secure area operates just like any other folder in the Vault Explorer namespace. I can drag a couple of files into the area, The green colored text is Windows way of saying these are encrypted files. And once they're up there, I can open and edit them. Rename them. 
and so forth. Now let's simulate Mallory for a bit and pretend he somehow gained illicit access via the REST service. He has free reign over my account and you can see here that the secure area is showing up off the root folder. Mallory knows that my secret document is stored in the secure area so he opens that folder. Here we start to see some security. The names of the two files I have in my account are missing and in their place we see strings of apparently random characters. Mallory is clever, though, and decides to just steal both files and figure out which is which later. Now that he has both files stored locally, he attempts to open the first one. All nonsense. Perhaps the secret document was the other file. But this one's nonsense, too. In fact, though the contents appear random, Mallory is looking at the ciphertext created at upload time with the key we created. Even if he knows every detail of the algorithm, Mallory has no hope of decrypting the data and is forced to search for easier prey. So if the secure area is so great, why wouldn't we always use the secure area for all of our online storage? As always, security is a question of trade-offs. By ensuring that access to the data is only possible with a user-controlled key, the secure area rules out some typical cloud features that require the service itself have access to file data. It is not possible to share files with others, for example, because there is no mechanism to provide potential recipients with a decryption key. It is impossible to search encrypted content. And there is no way to construct a preview of a document nor stream the media directly from the service without access to the plain text. The secure area also imposes some rather serious responsibilities on the user. I must keep track of my key at all times. Losing the key and forgetting my passphrase means I lose my data. For many files, there is just no need for this level of risk. Finally, having access to data from anywhere is one of the quintessential features of cloud storage, but the secure area limits accessibility dramatically. In particular, the difficulties in providing web access to secure area content are effectively insurmountable. The secure area isn't the answer to every security question, but it does provide the highest level of security for those situations that require it. Well, that's a few minutes. Thanks for spending them learning more about Vault Explorer. And may your data be ever in the cloud. See you next time.